Hello and welcome to our latest episode of Making Animals. Today, just to do something a little bit different, we're going to make a pangolin. And here's a little one I made earlier. For those who are not familiar with them, these little animals, you find them in China and Africa. Um, they don't really have a fa group, family group as such. They're sort of a bit of a cross between, when it comes to building, a bit like a hedgehog. Uh, almost a cross between a hedgehog and a dragon, I suppose. But they're actually fairly straightforward to make, so let's have a go at doing one. The, put, the shape of this fella really lends itself to being a ball. So we're going to start off with a nice little pinch pot egg. Got some drawings here as well. I'll put those over there just for the moment. We'll come back to those in due course. So I've got a bit of clay here. I accidentally left <clears throat> the bag of clay open a couple of days ago, so I've been so connect get a little bit moist which means that it's a little bit wet in some places dry in others so the first thing i'm going to need to do is just a little bit of not wedging as such but a bit of mixing so get it in my hands mix it up i want it the same consistency throughout now pangolins pangolins however you pronounce it are quite small animals this little fella is about life size in actual fact maybe very slightly bigger the babies are really cute, they hang on to the parent's tail, but I'm not doing a mother and baby before anybody suggests it. So, this up here. It's still a little bit wet, so I'm going to get into it. Okay, like that. And as with all pinch pot eggs, two pieces. It's probably going to be a bit big for what I want, so I'm going to make it a little smaller. I don't want to spend all day putting scales on this critter. Roll it into a ball. Thumb in it. And coax it into shape. I can feel that this isn't very well mixed, but it's, it'll do. Got a nice plump little egg. What you want as well is the shape to be fairly flat on what the bit that's going to be the belly and a nice curve on the back. Pinch it out like that, nice and even. Like that, one side, and the other side. This one is definitely a bit harder, this piece. As always, drawing it in. You want to keep it going up, not out. I'm making a pinch pot egg. Even all round. I want it fairly thin, but not so thin that we're going to have a problem when we come to stick the, the scales on. But of course, adding these extra scales is going to add weight to the whole thing. So the lighter we can keep it, the better. too bad. I'm going to think I could probably knock these out of my sleep now after all these sessions. Okay. That'll go together. A bit of my lovely gumpy slip here. All the surfaces. Put them together. some clay in, make a good join. At this point now I'm going to start shaping it a little bit. I've got a bit of too much of a dip there though so I'm just going to um, put it apart again for a moment and correct that while I can because I want that to be much rounder like that. Okay let's put it together again because that's going to be the back. Some clay into these cracks. See a little lump. Now, so the great thing is, we're going to cover this with a set of scales so it doesn't have to be perfect. As long as it's more or less the right shape, it doesn't matter if it's uneven. Let's 
subtle, so that imperfection is going to be hidden. Nice arch on the back of my work. That's the shape we want. Better on the belly. Curve on the back. That's our basic shape. Next, we make the head, and the uh, the head is a it's basically a cone. So I get a piece of clay, bring it down into a point, and then pitch it out so thumb in it. Making that sort of shape. Actually, I've got quite long noses. The one I made earlier, nose was probably a little bit short. I'm just going to coax this one out a bit more. Side, which end is going to be the head and which end is going to be the tail on this. So make sure it's a good curve for the back that's even. So I think on this I'm going to bring the tail down there and this end is going to be the head. So what I then do is again look at your cone, decide which you think might be the best to be the top of the head and which the best to be the bottom. I'm going to go with that. I'm just going to now flatten it out a bit. The top. Work out where I'm going to put it. I'm going to have it quite low like that and then make a hole make sure we don't have an air pocket hmm. there we go then you slip around the hole and attach the head to it so and let's just going to check I've got that right. Which way is up? That's going to be the head top. It's going to be the head. It's going to go on like that. This one's going to have his head a little lower than the other one. Get that on there. So slip round. Work it in. If necessary, add a little bit more clay to make sure it's going to stay put. At this point, it's starting to look like you're making a tadpole. <laughs> That's perfectly normal. So next, some legs. I'm going to do this before I do the tail, so that I can um, have the tail flowing down to the ground, because that's what their tails do. So, uh, these are great to make as, uh, as sculptures, because they have nice chunky legs as well. So. One of these things that's going to be falling over and you have to try and support it. Okay. Four equal. So have nice short little legs as well. It's even better as far as pottery is concerned. Okay, right. And make sure 
I know which is his head and which is his tail, and which is his top and which is his bottom. Uh, that way round, that's better. Right, so this is where we need to put the legs. Oop, haven't done that one. One leg there. It's still a little bit long, but that's okay. We can always lop a bit off. It's easier to take a bit off than add it on. In fact, that one's definitely long. It's like quite athletic, that leg. And of course, they're not the fastest creatures because they have to deal with getting around with all those scales. They work on the ability to be able to curl up into a tight ball to protect them from predators. Now I had it a minute ago. I know I did. I had two of them here a minute ago. There we go. This tool this morning has been determined to get lost. I keep mislaying it. Just going around the outside part here, and I'll go around the inner bit in a minute. So I've got them all firmly attached. And then I'll nick a bit off them, make them a little bit smaller. Drying ever so quickly again today, which is odd because it's quite high humidity at the moment. I'm all waiting for a thunderstorm to arrive around here. It's got to happen sooner or later. It just feels so close, like it's gonna do something soon. Right now, I'm just gonna do that bit in the middle of the legs. Good. His legs are not going anywhere. <laughs> yes, they don't look uh, like they fit into anything, but I think somebody told me as well they don't have a, a family group. They are a family group all of their own.
just going to short these feet off a bit so I don't want them quite so tall. So I could be very precise about this and get the ruler or the spirit level. I'm not going to though. hope that when I stand him upright he's going to be more or less level. A little bit high on that side. Just take a bit more off there. That's it. All four feet touch the ground. Always good. Right, I'm just going to again, because he's been lying upside down, just going to reshape him a bit, try and get that curve back into the back. We also have a nice air bubble in here. Oh, I've got to chop something off. Right, so I've got this air bubble in here so I can manipulate it to form that rounded top. Now for the tail. A little bit more clay. Now, although when you look at them, they have this really big, thick tail, most of that is actually scales. So what we're going to do is actually make the tail... quite thin really compared to what you think it would be so that we've just got really a, a base a base to put the scales on yes and naked they don't look right naked do they poor little things so shape it down like that and then from the base down now is he still too tall i think he's still too tall sorry more legs coming off i say i'm not happy unless i'm chopping bits off him so i'm gonna Ooh, probably a little bit overkill, not quite that short. Uh, that might be better. So I, could do that. Now, I don't have to be fast runners because their prey, like anteaters and things, is sort of termites and insects, which don't run fast. And they don't need to run away from predators, mainly because of their huge scales means that they just need to curl up a bit like a hedgehog to protect themselves. And if you're tracking, catching insects, it helps to be close to the ground where your nose can sniff them out. So let's tail that up. And sit round it, make sure that's on. Going anywhere. Yeah. I'm just going to put a piece of clay underneath the tail as well. Make sure that's all good and secure. Because this clay is going to have to hold quite a bit of weight when we put the scales on. Now, the bit you've been waiting for. How do we scale a pagolin? Well, it's a little bit like roofing a pagolin, actually, more than uh, scaling. The scales themselves... <sighs> I've been doing some sketches, as usual. So I've actually had a quite a close look at the scales. The scales themselves tend to be this sort of slightly leaf shape. They're not dead round. They come to a little bit of a point. Smaller scales on the head, very big ones on the back. And not that many of them, so maybe four or five, perhaps not even that, between the shoulder and the, the base of the tail. Um, and you say just a few on the head. So we need to get that sort of shape. Now you can do that all sorts of ways. For the, the tail part of this, I found that one of these cutters actually cuts the right shape, but they're a little small. So you could cut this with quite thick clay and then press the clay to make it the right shape if you wanted to be really picky about it. Having done this one and spending probably about half an hour just doing the tail, I have a better solution, which I'm going to use. 
and that is I'm going to put all these bits to one side and I'm going to get a fresh piece off the block and I'm going to roll it out. Uh, I did them yesterday, Katie, yesterday afternoon. So, so I think it's always a good idea to do a drawing, even if you're no good at drawing, because it really makes you look hard at what you're working on. Oh, crumbs, how many rolling pins does one person need? It's a bit overkill, isn't it? And um, you really start to pick up on the fine details. So I want this fairly thin, because you don't want them too heavy and chunky. No, they're more, they're more that shape, just the shape of one of those petals. So that's sort of rounded with a little point on the end. It's simple if they were honeycomb shape, wasn't it? But no, nature's not going to do that for us. So, all I'm going to do is you start from the tail, because of the way they overlap like this, you start at the back and work forward. If you try and do it the other way around, you'll find you'll continue having to lift up the scales to get the other one in. So always start from the back. So same for anything you want to put scales on. A snake, dragon, whatever. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this into strips. And the tail and go with that sort of width come back to that in a moment and then I'm going to cut this strip into squares then each square I'm going to take the corner off on one side like that so I've got that shape and repeat. Then plenty of slip on the tail. Now the other thing about pangolins is because they have the ability to curl themselves up into a really tight ball with all their scales forming a protective circle around them, these plates are not side by side like they like would on a, on possibly on a dragon. They actually overlap so that as they curl they can move and allow it to, freedom to actually get into that tight space. So we start with the middle one, get that on, and then one each side. That. These might be a little bit big these ones, I'm just going to because they're the starting point. I'm just going to make them a tiny bit smaller. Okay. And then let's get him on a banding wheel so you can see. First, <laughs> find a banding wheel. going on. So this one is going to go slightly overlapping on the side there and then one on the other side. Look at that at the moment. Then the next one goes over the top. So it doesn't matter if it's a little bit up tidy when you do it because you're going to cover it up with the next set of scales. Rolled clay. Cut some more strips. Let's go to the side. So I say it, it has similarities to roofing a house. Putting the pangolin scales on. Strips. 
strip. Into squares. Being really lazy, of course you can stack the squares up into a little pile and cut them all at once. Give you plenty. Did I get that side? No, not yet. So scale on that side. The scales on the side of the tail point down a little bit, so they're not quite as flush. They sort of hang down a little bit more that way. And now you understand what I mean about the fact that the tails are actually quite thin underneath all of this. But with this huge armoury on the top, it makes them look massive. Oh dear. Right. Somewhere I've picked up a little bit of glaze, so I'm just going to make sure I take that off. Try always to avoid getting glaze into unfired clay. If it gets mixed in during firing, that glaze will change state and will cause holes to form in your pottery. Or bits to blow out of it. Okay, so now for another row. I'm getting close to the back so I can make these scales now a little bit bigger. So cut a strip. Okay. I'm try cutting all of these as one go, just to really speed the process up. Just hope I don't stick them all together in the process. at the top of the tail now. Size there, then we can move on to the, the main body. And the nice thing about the main body is the scales are really big. So things really start to speed up when you hit that. Okay, so for the big for the back section then, instead of cutting quite a thin strip, I don't know. It does feel quite lonely, I have to say, Katie. So I'm going to cut quite big strips this time now. Same process. Make them into squares, only much bigger squares.
so just for the moment. Now we can start, as I say, some bigger pieces. Same principle. Start with the middle one. And their scales quite interestingly um, put together in that you have this sort of row of scales which runs nice and evenly over the top, which makes life a lot easier when it comes to put them together. They're not quite so random as you might think on a, on a reptile. As you do each row, make sure you go the whole row. Don't feel tempted to just go bang, 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 bang down the, uh, the whole body because you'll find yourself having to lift them up to tuck them in when you're done. So we need to get them all on. And then the same on the other side. Mr. Tiggs's hairs. Thankfully it all burns out in the kiln. Okay. So we need this. Edges. Oh, really helps if you put the paintbrush in the right way. It's picking up. <laughs> it's super busy. We've got some, a few people coming in, glazing. But, uh, although we're a weekend, we've still got room to go in the kiln before we can fire it. So this afternoon, I intend to spend the well, and the rest of the week really spend the, the time glazing. Just if for nothing else, just to fill up the kiln so we can fire it. It's the trouble having such big kilns. Normally the, um, the amount of pottery we do here means the kilns get fired, each kiln, the biscuit kiln and the uh, glaze kiln get fired every week, but with things being quieter, we're not getting fired so often, so we just haven't got the stuff to go through. And you don't want to fire a big kiln with just uh, a handful of pieces in it. Get 
enough scales out of this now just to finish off the job. Each time I'm doing this I'm making sure that I join just at one end and I'm leaving the other end loose so that you get that sort of nice effect of the fact they will move. As the animal moves. Pointed. It's a bit more a bit too round that one. Yeah. Right, I need to keep sure that central line is actually running down his spine, not going off to one side at that point. Almost at the head. Each time I attach one, I'm checking to make sure that I've correctly covered up anything that was visible from the previous scale. This should be the last ones, I think. Head. So make sure I really work these in now. I was looking at pictures of pangolins, um, pangolins, how you just call them. The um, some of them actually have fur as well, that sort of crops out between the the scales. I find it really amusing, Katie, when I see people on, say, the pottery head site, where they say things like, "Well, I mean, I've, I've managed to I I fired my kiln twice this year. Isn't that amazing?" It's like really. I have my kiln twice this week. <laughs> well, people put a kiln up, kiln up for sale and they say, yeah, it's been used a lot, it's been used 12 times, been fired 12 times. Okay, I didn't 
doesn't take long for me to fire my kilns up 12 times. <laughs> okay, so down to the head. Of course, the legs are also armoured as well if you want to go to that extreme. So for the head, we need scales as well, but these are going to be smaller, so I can use up some of these scraps that I've got. Again, making, can make little oblongs, tangles, but again, shape them. So now we go down into the, the smaller scales. That scale's probably a little bit too big, but never mind. I'm going to press this one out make it a little bit bigger. There we go. So again, he has a row of scales down the middle of his nose. Like the tail, three scales wide. Overlapping so he can move. Give, his, give him his ears. We go any further, and the ears are basically just a couple of coils. So, some coils, two coils. Same size. And then we're just going to twist them round with their ears are sort of really tight to the side of their heads. Again, they don't really need good hearing. Well, I don't know, maybe they do for hunting out insects, I'm not sure. But they tuck in. And the scale's there. side as well. I'm just going to smooth it in against the head on the other side. To do that I'm going to have to look at it so I don't really be able to see what I'm doing. I'll smooth that in there. Those little round ears like that. And his ears on the other side. sure I get the ear in the same position on the other side of the head. Yeah. Then, having got that in position, we have a, a few more scales running down the nose. Scale there. Okay. Yep. One scale there. Put that in. And a couple of very small scales either side bring us to the end of the face.
see my fingers with, so I'm roughing everything up. Right. So by the time it's got all its armour on, as you can see, it's, it sort of looks somewhat out of shape. But as you see, most of that is just armour to make up that shape. And we need a couple of eyes. usual way, make one piece, cut it in half. Right. Slip on them and they tuck in underneath that last scale, just by there, hopefully. Except I've got the slip on against my finger, not against the pot, which doesn't help. There we go. <laughs> That's too big. So I'm just going to make that a little smaller. Somebody walking about three miles away that Kaya objects to. Never let it be said that Kaya doesn't have good hearing. Right, let's try that again. That's better. Again, they don't have really big eyes. They tend to rely a lot more, I think, on their sense of smell to find their prey. Like most anteater type of creatures. Right, and now we have our basic pagolin. Then, as I said, the legs are also scaled, so if you want to go to the next degree, then you need to make some scales for the legs. So, same way, cut up some squares. Shape them. Perhaps they also have exceedingly strong claws. Um, if you feel like that way inclined, I'm not going to put claws on mine. Again, make sure that you start from the back and work forward, not like I just did. Because if you do what I just did, then you've got to lift up the lower one here in order to be able to tuck the other one behind it. So yes, they're completely covered in scales everywhere and they have these really awesome claws. Quite big claws. Well, ripping up termite nests and that sort of thing. So, have fun, have a go at a pangolin, and I <coughs> back on Monday. Hiya! <laughs> and uh, we'll have a look at what we're going to do then. Have a good weekend.